Professor, do you think then the bickering and the noise between the deputy president, Raila, although all those who are bickering and politicking against what the president has said, is costing Kenyans development? First of all, and, right, and, yeah, yeah, go on. Raila is like a mgumo tree. Those who have tried to mess up with Raila have messed themselves up. I'm not saying that I'm his supporter or what have you. I know him personally, but I'll put that aside. Now, when you come up and you start attacking the very man who has fought like J Joe Kadenge, when some of them were in diapers, when some of them were in diapers, when some of them could not even climb a mgumo tree, they have grown teeth very fast and titted on their mums after coming out of their wombs. And now they are fighting this man who has fought and lost his battles. You can look his health. You can look at what has happened to his family. And then you are coming up to start attacking Raila. You're wasting your time. Whoever attacks Raila does not stand. Kenyans need more Raila and Raila. So do you think the bickering is at the expense of uh, development in Kenya? Do you think well, that it's Kenyans not development. It's power. And those who are angry of power, they are fighting. And I'm not going to glorify them here, as I've said before. Power comes from God. This is a man of God. I see him on, on Facebook, going to the church every time. He's a senior counsel. He loves the Lord. Let us tell people the truth and let us tell them now. If, and I'm, uh, and if, I mean, if you come here to start saying this and that, it will not help. Look at Moses Kuria, for example. Who doesn't know Moses Kuria? Personally, he's a very good man. If you meet Moses Kuria, you can laugh and do what have you. But his utterances, where are they coming from? Jubilee. Where is Kieleke coming from? Jubilee. Where is Wanjiku coming from? Jubilee. It's a Jubilee issue, and Jubilee is no longer party. It's so the question is, is that bickering costing us development in yes. Kenya? Or do you think yes. that Kenya is still going on as it should be, no, despite the fact that there is... No, not at all. Okay. We, we were doing very well. When Kinoti and Haji came up, mm. and I'm sure God forbid me from what I'm going to say, when they took over investigations and things seemed to have gone the way they were going, who brought that down? These people. At whose expense? Kenyans. While I agree with the senior counsel on what he said, that it's Kenyans who keep on electing these people. At the same time, also, we have to find an alternative. Mm -hmm. Are we going to be in this cycle every time thinking about power and power, yet we are going down the drain? Mm -hmm. So what do you think needs to happen for Kenya to get back on track if that bickering is costing us? They should us? all be removed. They should all go. Mm -hmm. The cabinet and members of parliament, or if the president can dissolve the government, dissolve the government at the expense of Kenya. Some of us will come up and you have more and better policies for this country than sitting down watching television for morning to okay. evening. Uh, maybe a good idea there, Weda, but not a possibility for parliament to be dissolved right now. No, no, no. Despite, would... despite there are some MPs who have actually called for that to happen. No, that would that's not about to In fact, removal, 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 removal is never a solution. It's like sack, sack, sack. Look at IBC. Yes. We've never solved this. We, we keep on removing, <laughs> removing, and then they, you bring in new people before their roots, like his party. Before you take root below to bear fruits above, mm -hmm. you must have time. God created things that you plant and then you let them grow, you give them time. I think there are areas that the president and the deputy, remembering their promise to Kenyans, should come together and take us to where they promised us. They promised us affordable, quality health care. They didn't promise us handshake or kieleweke or tanga tanga. In fact, they didn't promise that the deputy president will be opening this, opening that. They'll be sitting in their office. And then when I walk to a dispensary in Kombewa, if I go there for malaria, they check for so many things that I say, hey, am I in Kenya or I'm in Singapore? That, that's what we wanted. And the remaining two and a half years, I would like the president to go back. I would like the deputy president. As at now, offices are closed. Supermarkets are closing down. People hardly have anything. The currency we have is being challenged in court. So what do we call ours? I used to say about the, the, what you are praising, the fight against corruption. I said that they were doing so much hula baloo, but very little uh, action. work, action. Mm -hmm. So eventually they take people to court for Wanjiku to be happy. Little evidence. What happens when you go to court? There's a problem. We said if you want to take somebody to court, get proper evidence. So I think as at now, Jukumu is on the president and the deputy. And they better know that the four agenda items, at least let them run away with the two. Food, it is easy. 
and healthcare. And health, it is easy. And when they do that, then you'll not be saying, oh, Joe Kadenga died like this. Also, as did not have healthcare. That's what can bring you to poverty. And yeah. then what can bring you to death is lack of food. Let them do those two. And then uh, 2022, when the deputy president comes, he says, we are finished with these two. I want to go and finish these other two. Then okay. we say, from the works, there is hope that he can do them. But at this rate, when he will come to tell us, Will he be coming to tell us that uh, he was so much in the Tanga Tanga that he needs time to go and work or what will they come and tell us? What will he tell us? All right, Professor, do you think it's about time? Looking at uh, the clock is ticking and Jubilee gave us a promise of four agendas which were quite huge by all means and standards. Do you think it's about time maybe we swallowed the bitter pill of reality and possibly just pick one or like Weda says two, affordable health care and maybe food security or whatever it is that the president would pick to ensure that that he leaves a legacy because four seems too wide given the time that we have now the president's four agendas have died <clears throat> they will not work until he does the following dissolve the government sack all these ministers bring in new people and i'm sure if when i was appointed minister for health or attorney general thank you for the well wishes if he was appointed and he's, a, he's capable he's a capable candidate for parliament because of his experience as a lawyer and what have you and he brought in people like Matiangi, re retained people like Matiangi, and had not crack <coughs> guys. The government, the so, country so will move on. We'll but move if on. we say that now he should, co <laughs> he should come and concentrate on one agenda, then that's a failed state, failed president. Because so, so since, since it's not about, he's not about to resolve parliament, or that may not happen, there's a very, very slim chance of that happening. Are you then saying that as Kenyans, we better forget about the big four? Definitely. Completely. Definitely. But the president can do, can do the following, as I have said before. Dissolve, <coughs> the pro, the, uh, dissolve parliament, or if you can't dissolve par parliament, dissolve the cabinet. Bring in hard-hitting men to come and help you. The president lacks the likes of Matiangi. If he had four Matiangis in that cabinet, trust me, would be moving. And secondly, would like this issue of appointing ministers from elsewhere to end. Let's change the constitution and have ministers accountable in parliament. Let them be members of parliament. Let them stand up on their feet. Let them answer questions in the parliament. Let them be responsible to their constituencies. It happened well during Moy's time. It happened well during... Kenyatta's time, and it happens in the House of Commons. Mm -hmm. But this lunacy of going to America and copying the American Constitution and pasting it in Kenya, that's why you see this chaos. How do you take some charcoal burner who never went to school, a, a rogue <coughs> a tax conductor, and you bring him in Parliament and make him a minister? What kind of chaos are you doing? You have seen what has happened recently. Okay. We don't want this kind of thing to happen. Whether that's a professor's solution that dissolve parliament and take, take, send these guys home for us to be able to move back on track as Kenya. What's your thoughts on the solution? Uh, what does the president need to do? Because at the I, I, end I of the day, I, I think I'm the saying the president it. now, the time is uh, nigh. So the president needs to narrow down. It's not about dissolving parliament. It's not about creating chaos because to settle takes very long. He needs to narrow down on two agenda items. If that is too much, let him narrow down on food security. Let, let, let the country be food sufficient in a long, sustainable manner. Mm. On top, let him start the process of uh, quality, affordable health care. We should have, once the health was dissolved, government should have ejected, but to build or treble Kenyatta National from where 